Dr. Blackstock, uh, what concerns do you have about the return to school and what prevention methods do you, do you suggest? Yeah, Andrea, thank you so much for having me. I should just preface this with, you know, I have two school-age children. I have a five and seven-year-old who will be returning to New York City public schools next week. And, and I would say, you know, I'm concerned because most areas of the country have substantial to high transmission levels right now. And so we are basically returning teachers, staff, and students back to school with many of the COVID protections lifted. So no more surveillance testing. There's no test to exit. So if a child is infected and comes out of isolation, they don't have to repeat a test um, to say that they're negative. And, and we know that people are usually infectious for more than five days. And then also many districts do not even have mask policy. So this policy that even Philadelphia has of wearing a mask for the first 10 days, to be honest with me, I don't know what the evidence is behind that. Um, I would say that if most areas of the country are substantial to high transmission, that you know students and staff and teachers should be masking. We know that schools are not inherently safe, but they are safe when a layered mitigation strategy is used. And so that is masking, that is testing, but also paying attention to air and clean air. And that is something that although schools receive congressional funding, I, I have not seen it being invested into ensuring that there is an infrastructure in place to, to make sure that there is clean air in our schools for children. Yeah, and because Republicans in Congress have blocked COVID funding, the government announced, the administration announced that they are no longer going to provide those free tests, that they need to save them in case there's another surge. Right. So that's another area where there's going to be a lot less surveillance. Absolutely, Andrea. So we have a more contagious variant. We're heading into cold weather where people will be indoors more. And all of this, and we have relaxed, you know, COVID guidance. So the guidelines have been relaxed. And, and so I'm, I'm concerned that we are going to see a spike in cases and people are not going to have the quote unquote tools that the administration has discussed um, available to their use. Those rapid tests are incredibly helpful to tell you whether or not a person is infectious, meaning whether they are able to transmit the virus and infect somebody else. And I would say that, you know, heading into the winter, that is a tool that every American should have um, readily available and accessible to them. Especially with the kids back at school and bringing things home as well. Uh, yes. Dr. Uchi Blackstock, thank you so much. Good to see you. Thank you, Andrea.